we're in the middle of Midtown right now, right near Fifth Avenue, one of the epicenters of the crisis at hand throughout the looting and the havoc which just transpired. How did you keep a community together and keep spreading your message during a crisis such as that? It's interesting, you know, there's no question that the role of the rabbi evolved, first of all, during Corona, but also during this time, you know, you're not going to bar mitzvahs and brit milahs and weddings anymore. You're kind of keeping people calm, giving them a chance to maintain their equilibrium, their serenity, etc. And one of the things that I'm actually proudest of is the way we've witnessed people develop during the time of Corona, like um, on a synagogue level, you know, I'm running the Safra Synagogue in the city, but also Chaza here and in Los Angeles and in the UK. Overnight, you know, we shifted all of these classes and seminars and, you know, and discussion groups. We shifted into an online perspective. And it's funny because the oldest group of the congregants, they only want to go on Zoom. The, the youngest version of the congregants only want to be on Instagram. And like the middle-aged moms and dads, like those are on, on Facebook. So I have a setup in my, my bedroom, in the corner of my room, that's turned into a TV studio with a laptop and two phones and recording all at the same time with microphones coming out of everywhere. When did I learn AV? Like that did not happen in yeshiva, right? Crash course, right? But the crazy thing is that during this time, you know, people had to evolve. You know, there's a great line that goes, adapt or die. And human beings have been doing that since time immemorial. The Jewish people has been driven from country to country to country and witnessing people from the synagogue evolving. Businesses that died, but they needed to be able to come. So they started doing other things and they started uh, suddenly providing and selling, you know, masks to the and getting masks for the NYPD, you know, hopefully not overcharging, but loads of different things that they were coming up with that were so uh, on the spur of the moment and you were witnessing human creativity. It's amazing to see what human beings are capable of when their backs are up against the wall. Suddenly, this unbelievable force inside you comes out. In Judaism, we call that chilek eloha mimal, a portion, a piece of God inside, a godliness with no limitations, you know, with no problems, with no issues, just you go out and you get the job done. That has been one of the most incredible things to see during this time, witnessing people grow and shift and change. It, it kind of makes you think, what is it that we're being taught here? What is it that we're being, uh, commun what is God communicating to us in, in all of this? And, um, and I, I must say that there's one of the greatest teachings of, in all of Judaism is the idea of making a beracha, of making a blessing. Now, it's not just that you make a blessing like you see in the movies where everyone holds hands at the dinner table and they, you know, make a blessing for the food. In Judaism, you make a blessing before you have a cup of water, you make a blessing after you go to the bathroom, you make a blessing when you're getting married, you make a blessing when you're burying someone. The word beracha means to give thanks, it means to bless God for all the wonderful things, all the amazing things in your life. And one of the bedrocks upon which Judaism stands is the idea that every single thing in our lives is a blessing. And that sounds incredulous. I mean, that you can make a blessing at a wedding and at a funeral, like who else but the Jewish people would do that, right? And, and yet, I think that there's a wisdom in that that can kind of apply to everybody. And if we've learned anything from Corona and from the protests, it's to admit that not everything is in our control. And when a person can admit that, then suddenly they become so much more thankful because they realize in every area of their life they were given something that maybe they didn't have to be given. You know, we felt like we could conquer the moon and then we realized we couldn't even conquer something that we couldn't even see. And to recognize that I woke up and I took a breath and I'm thankful for that breath. That's amazing. You only did that once Corona came around. You know, when we recognize how special, how powerful each member of the human race is and how strong their impact can be on an interconnected world, that's when we realize the world of Mashiach, the world of perfection. It's when we realize that that we see that united we are one.